everybody, it's your girl, Minister B, and I want to welcome you to St. Albans Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Curtis T. Harding Jr. is our pastor, and his beautiful First Lady is Reverend Inez Harding. It is Palm Sunday, y'all, so if you're a visitor, we welcome you into this place. We thank you so much for joining us here. We're so excited to see you or to, you know, chat with you, and if you're a visitor, welcome back, family. We always love to be in company with you, so sit back, relax. Grab your palms, wave them in the air because you're in for an experience like never before. We're the church with a warm welcome, so we hope you feel just that. We welcome you, everybody. Good afternoon, church. Let us bow our head as we prepare to receive the word of our Lord. Father God, we come before you first, giving you honor, glory, and praise. We thank you for getting us through this past week. We thank you for all of the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, those past, those present, and those coming in the future. Father God, we ask that you send us a word today. Send us a word that will encourage, restore, and renew our spirits. Send a word to those that may not know you as they should to be drawn to the hem of your garment. Send us a word of comfort. Remind us that in spite of it all and despite anything, you are the way, the truth, and the light. And for that, we give you all the honor and praise. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen.
afternoon, church. Today I'll be reading John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19, and it reads, The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. And the word of the Lord is blessed.
still with us. I pray, let's pray now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you will anoint this Curtis T. Harding Jr. that I may say with thus saith the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. For Christ's sake I pray. Amen. I want to talk to you today about three crowds on Palm Sunday. Three crowds on Palm Sunday. Pray with me if you will. It was Passover time, and Jews had come from the ends of the earth to the city of Jerusalem. Wherever Jews lived, it was their longing to observe at least one Passover in Jerusalem. In addition to those who had come from afar, there were also, <coughs> there were also those who had come from afar. There were also local Jews who came from Palestine. Yes. Now the Deuteronomy law required every adult male Jew who lived within 20 miles of Jerusalem to come to that holy city. And uh, according to Josephus, a census was taken of the number of lambs that were slain at the Passover feast. And the number calculated, listen, was 265,000 lambs. And biblical students know that a minimum of 10 persons was required to eat, to eat each lamb. If this estimate is correct, then there must have been about 2,650,000 people at the feast. Yes. Even if the number was exaggerated, yet the crowds must have been huge in Jerusalem. Yes. And all of its surrounding vicinity must have been filled with people. Yes. The text also suggests that there were three different crowds on that day. The first crowd were the patriotic Jews who came to remember their, the deliverance of their ancestors from the Egyptian bondage. So national feelings ran high during the time of Jesus as this present generation of Israelites troubled under the yoke of Roman oppression, no doubt they had hoped that this Passover would be the time when God would send the Messiah. Yes, amen, amen. The second crowd included the Sadducees, wow. those carpet baggers, wow. yes. the landowners, yes. the Pharisees, the religious folk, and the Roman gods who were only concerned by any means about keeping order. So they were always on edge and hoped that no incident would occur which would, which, which would ignite the smoldering and hostility and desire for freedom which was always beyond, below the song surface, yes. waiting for the right moment to explode. The third, the third crowd was those who had seen and heard that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So their hopes and prayer was that Jesus would free them from the Romans yes, right. and the established religion, yes, well. which had created so many rules and regulations that they could not fulfill. Yes. Well, according to John's account, 
It was during this Passover that Jesus had come to nearby Bethany to see about the one whom he loved, his friend Lazarus. Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And news about this miracle had reached Jerusalem with its curious, restless, and hopeful crowds. Amen. Amen. So as Jesus headed toward Jerusalem, an enthusiastic crowd that had been with him in Bethany and had seen his mighty works followed him. So word went out, went ahead that Jesus, the man who had raised Lazarus from the grave, was coming to town. So a crowd of Passover pilgrims, some of whom were curious, some who were well-wishers, and some who were some who were devout and devoted, who lived in constant readiness to receive the Messiah, went to meet, greet Jesus and his followers. Well, my brothers and sisters, when the joyful Bethany crowd met with the expectant crowd, the Jerusalem crowd, amid the celebrative atmosphere of the Passover and around, around them, my brothers and sisters, a spontaneous combustion of joyful excitement and animation broke out. And for that reason, Jesus, who was riding on a donkey, was received as a conquering king in the spirit of tradition. So some cut down branches, palm branches, from the trees and waved them frantically in the air, while others scattered their clothes and palm along the road. Multitudes shouted, Hosanna! the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. Matthew's gospel tells us that the Pharisees expressed their fear and fright by remarking that the whole world is gone after him. This was a very important day for Jesus. For Jesus' disciples who had left all to follow him, and even for the Lord. But if the gospel writers had put down their pens and ended their stories with Palm Sunday, with Palm Sunday's triumphal entry, we would have a nice, neat package and an essentially trouble-free success story. Yes. Is anybody listening? Amen. This would be a good place for the gospel to end. Yes. Can you imagine the newsboys yelling, extra, extra, read all about it, yes. about a small town carpenter turned teacher and a miracle working prophet from Nazareth Road, road, O oh God, to the praises of the multitudes as he entered downtown Jerusalem. What better place to end the gospel story than at that moment when Jesus was riding the pinnacle of popularity, acceptability, respectability, and success? What better place to end the gospel than at that moment when the whole world seemed to be literally falling at Jesus' feet and his future looks brighter than ever. Yet we know that if the gospels ended with the Palm Sunday event, then the Bible would be incomplete. If the gospels had ended with Palm Sunday, we might think that Palm Sunday was Jesus' finest hour. We might think that our Lord's message, his ministry, 
admission have been accepted and understood by those who cheered him. Well, we might think that the crowds yes. who greeted him stayed with him. Well, Do I have a praying church? Well, oh, it's easy to to part, to be part of the Palm Sunday crowds. Yes, yes. For everyone loves a winner. Yes. Everyone likes to be on a team of someone who seems to be going places. Yes. When the crowds are singing praises, when following him is the end thing to do. When there are no risks, no inconveniences, no sacrifices to make, and no demands are placed upon our obedience, time, or, or, or talent, when no quests are being made for our tithes and offerings, the easiest thing to do is to shout Hosanna. Hosanna. It's easy to join with Jesus in the high moments uh -huh. of rhapsody uh -huh. and celebration and ecstasy. Uh -huh. Oh, how honestly, we honestly wish that all our moments would be like this one. Uh -huh. But my brothers and sisters, the Palm Sunday story, while satisfying, does not tell the whole story. Christians who only walk with Jesus on Palm Sunday when things are going well and everybody seems to be happy will miss out on the real victory. Oh yes. Christians who only see Jesus as a conquering king living up to their own expectations will miss out on the real message, the real ministry, and meaning of Jesus. Some people in the crowd missed out on the essence, the effervescence, and the quintessence of the gospel. But to really understand who Jesus is, what he was about, and what he can really do for you, to you, in you, with you, and through you. You've got to move out of the crowd. God wants you to, God wants to take you to another level. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of Jesus' last week of earthly ministry before his death. We call it Passion Week. And yet, so much of what we know as a gospel revolves around this last week. That's right. If we really want to understand the gospel fully, uh -huh. if we really want to be the Christian that God calls us to be, we've got to get out of the crowds and go beyond Palm Sunday wow. in our attitudes toward life. Yeah. We must go beyond our preconceived misconceptions concerning the way of salvation. Yeah. We must go beyond Palm Sunday yeah. and discover the devotion that is outside of our concentric circle yeah. of contact. Yes. We must go beyond Palm Sunday yeah. in our living unto God in the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? To reach the fullness of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must get out. Hallelujah. We must get out of the, the, the crowd. Amen. Amen. All right. But, but if it were, if our church was perfect, oh, yes. but if, if it were, I couldn't belong. Right. And you couldn't belong. Right. So the church is not made up yes. of perfect people, but rather perfect people who are striving, yes. struggling, yes. and straining. Yes. And I pray and aiming for perfection. Amen. As any struggle, 
Sometimes we fail. Sometimes we succeed. But we must keep on straining just to say. And although our temples and efforts are not perfect, we need to stay in God's house. And because we're in God's house, every now and then, Jesus does come by. Say amen if you will. Whenever we stray too far away from where we ought to be, Jesus has a way of, of shaking us, awakening us, and bringing us back into line. That's why we pray. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. When God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Do I have a witness? So we must go beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus on Tuesday when he debated with those who criticized him and tried to discredit his teachings on Palm Sunday. It's easy to get lost in the ecstasy and the excitement of the crowd. Yes. Believe, believe that, and believe that everybody is applauding what's going on. Yes. Oh yes. yes, we must get out of the crowd yes. to discover that in the crowd, righteousness has its enemies. Yes. Contrary to our finding, mm -hmm. everybody wasn't and isn't rejoicing on that Sunday or even this Sunday. They question and challenge us not to learn but to make us angry. Yes. They, they steal our joy yes. and cause us to doubt our faith and yes. even ourselves. But we cannot allow a Tuesday devil to take our Palm Sunday spirit. We can't allow a Tuesday gossiper to steal our Sunday joy. We can't allow a Tuesday busybody mm -hmm. to, block, to block us from the business of the kingdom. We can't lay our religion on the side, you know, or lose it, or, on, or over a Tuesday critic. Like Jesus, all we can do is answer with the power of the of God's word yes. and 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 oh yes and hold the profession of our faith without wavering. Yes. Can I get an amen? amen. We've got to move beyond Palm Sunday wow. and follow him on that Wednesday. Yeah. On Wednesday, Judas, one of whom Jesus had chosen as a disciple met with the authorities to betray the Lord. Yes. Did they do that? Right. On Wednesday, according to Matthew yes. and Mark, while Jesus was dining, yes. he received an act of kindness. Mm -hmm. A woman by the name of Mary yeah. came with an alabaster box oh, yeah. out of genuine love yes. and gratitude, poured a bottle of costly perfume on Jesus, soothing his spirit. Yes. One of the painful lessons we must learn is that in every church, say every church, yes. every family, yes. every concentric circle of contact, yes. there is a Judas. Yes. Sometimes those who do us the greatest harm mm -hmm. are not those from the outside, yes. but from but from those who are on the inside. But for every Judas who betrays our trust, there is someone who will respond to our kindness with an act of love and thanksgiving. For every Judas who discourages us, there is somebody who will lift our spirits. For every Judas who tears us down, Thank God there is someone who will build us up. For every Judas who digs a ditch, there is somebody who will pull us up. 
for every Judas who hurts us, yes. there is someone who will comfort us. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes. Thank God for Jesus. Thank you. We've got to get out of the Palm Sunday crowd and follow Jesus to the Thursday afterwards. Follow him to the upper room where Jesus sat down with his disciples at the Last Supper, broke bread and said, take eat. This is my body. Yes. Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, uh -huh. he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sins. When you get out of the Palm Sunday crowd, you will learn to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And when you when you go beyond Palm Sunday, you can make sacrifices yes. for those you love, even though present circumstances may indicate that your sacrifices are in vain. Right. Now don't go to sleep on me. Right. Follow Jesus on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. yes. And let the cup and let the cup pass from you. Right. No, no. Follow Jesus on Thursday into Gethsemane and hear him pray. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. It seemed that Jesus wanted to abandon his mission, but he prayed until he resigned himself. He said, not my will, but thine be done. When you step out of the crowd, by faith, you can pray your way through your darkest hour yes. until you get the victory. Yes. But you got to go with Jesus on Thursday yes. as he stands before his accusers with power to destroy and yet never uttering a mumbling or muttering word. Yes. When you go beyond Palm Sunday, you can face Satan's madness with a spirit of peace yes. and tranquility. Yes. Amen. 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 We must go beyond Palm Sunday and follow Jesus, follow Jesus. on Good Friday oh, yes. as he car carried an old rugged cross yes. up to Calvary. Yes, We've got to go beyond Palm Sunday. Yes. I hear Jesus saying, if anyone yes. would come after me, yes. let him get away from the security of the crowd. Yes. Deny yourself, yes. pick up your cross, yes. and follow me. Yes. Follow Jesus down to the yes. tomb yes. where authorities hastily prepared his body for the final burial. Yes. When you go beyond Palm Sunday, you can learn how to bury your pain in the face of the heartbreak of Calvary experience by waiting on the Lord. Isaiah said, but they that wait upon the Lord yes. shall be their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings yes. like eagles. They yes. shall run yes. and not be weary. Yes. And they shall walk yes. and not faint. Yes. Somebody might ask, does the gospel end here? The answer to that question is a resounding no. no. Matthew's gospel records Jesus' crucifixion and burial in chapter 27. But thank God, thank God. there's another chapter. Oh, yes. in, in Mark, the crucifixion and burial is found in chapter 15. Yes. But thank God, thank God, there's another chapter. In Luke's gospel, the crucifixion and burial are found in chapter 23. Mm -hmm. But there is, there is another chapter. In, in John, the crucifixion and burial are found in chapter 19. Mm -hmm. But thank God, thank God there are two more chapters. Yes. There, there's another chapter beyond Good Friday. Yes. There's another chapter beyond suffering mm -hmm. and tribulation. 
heartache and pain, sickness and death. There are, there's another chapter beyond Satan and sin. It is a chapter that tells the story of some faithful women who, who went to the temple, to the tomb, to anoint a dead body, but received a message from the angels about a living Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, ain't the Bible right? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he dismounted from a donkey. But when Jesus arose on Resurrection Sunday, he arose to dismount no more. John on the Isle of Patmos said, I saw heaven open and behold and beheld a white horse who sat upon it and is called Faithful and True. On his robe and on his thigh, he had a name inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The three crowds did not see the real victory, but by faith, those who walked with Jesus did. Amen. It would be, it would, if we would share in the real victory, then we too must move beyond the Palm Sunday witness with Jesus in the temple on Monday. Ah, uh, defend Jesus on Tuesday. Comfort Jesus on Wednesday. Pray with Jesus on Thursday. Bear a cross for Jesus on, on Monday. Yeah. Wait for Jesus on Saturday. Yes. Then we shout victory on Sunday morning yes. as we receive the news from the angel yes. that the one that you see, he is not here. Not yes. Amen. But he is, he is alive yes. and alive forevermore. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Ain't God good? Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Amen. And so we thank God for Palm Sunday. But we thank God also for Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right.
the church say amen. If that sermon was just for you, somebody give God a good praise. Amen. Amen. And now, everybody, we are continuing on with worship. It is that time again. What time is it, everybody? It's offering time. It is offering time in the house. As you already know, there are three ways in which you can give. As always, you can go to www.sabcny.org, click Give on the line. You can give one through the portal, two texts to give, or three, you can send a physical check right on to the church. We thank everyone who has given already or who has a desire to give. We love you. Amen. So you know we got some weekly things coming up. Monday night, we have Bible study with our pastor on Zoom, the one and only Reverend Dr. Curtis T. Harding Jr. You can catch him on Zoom to get a little bit more in-depth about the Word of God. And then this Wednesday, somebody say this Wednesday, we have our last fellowship, our last Lenten fellowship speaker, okay? So we ask that you come out on Zoom and encourage the speaker for the evening. Then you can also catch us on Mondays or Fridays for individual prayer, everybody. You can call one or two numbers and you can catch uh, one of our reverends, ministers, or deacons for one-on-one -on -one prayer. Keep those calls on coming. All right. Also, remember this next Sunday is Palm is um is Communion Sunday. So we want you to grab your juice, grab your crackers. I hope you pick them up this Saturday so that you can commune with us next week. And guess what? You can catch us on this Friday, this Friday at 12 noon as we celebrate the, the death of our Savior for Good Friday service. So log in on Zoom. It's going to be live. We're going to have Good Friday service. We're going to have a great time in the Lord, singing, all of that stuff. So make sure you beat us there. Friday at 12 noon, Good Friday service. Also on 10 a.m., somebody say 10 a.m., 10 a.m. on Resurrection Sunday, our Sunday school will be having their Sunday school program. So instead of regular Sunday school, tune in so you can see our kids and our older seasoned saints. Uh, just tell us a little bit more about the resurrection of Christ. All right. And as always, Resurrection Sunday is next week, everybody. Resurrection Sunday is the day that our Savior died and he arose. He arose on the third day. So we want you to come back and we're going to have an awesome time in the Lord. So as always, we love you. I love you. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Get vaccinated. Do what you got to do to stay ahead of the game. We love you, but God loves you best. God bless you, everybody.